The cement bond log, or CBL, is an acoustic device used to detect the presence or absence of a cement bond between the casing and formation. The tool includes an acoustic transmitter and usually two receivers located three feet and five feet, 0.91 and 1.52 meters from the transmitter. The tool, which must be well centered, emits an acoustic signal that is detected by these receivers after traveling one of four possible acoustic paths from the transmitter to the receiver. The signal through the casing is likely to be the fastest, since sound travels quickly through steel. As a result, it is the first of the four signals to arrive at the far receiver. The next signal to arrive is that which passes through the formation. The cement signal and finally the fluid signal arrive later. Cement contacting the casing tends to dissipate or attenuate the signal energy as the signal propagates through the pipe. The greater the area of cement contacting the pipe, the weaker the signal at the receiver. The effect of a good cement job on the received signal, therefore, is to cause the pipe portion of the signal to be weak, while the formation portion is strong. When no cement is present, the free pipe rings rather loudly, like a bell, resulting in a very strong signal. The amplitude curve is universally presented on CBLs and typically displays the amplitude of the first signal to arrive at the near receiver. Since this amplitude is for the pipe portion of the signal, a low amplitude indicates good pipe to cement bonding, while a high amplitude indicates poor bonding. The amplitude signal alone, however, does not reveal the quality of the cement bond to the formation. The variable density log, or VDL, helps in that regard. Also displayed on the CBL, it is made up of numerous closely spaced exposures of the film by the positive wave train amplitudes. The result is a sort of contour map of the history of the wave train over the logged interval. Notice that the pipe portion of the received acoustic signal appears as strong straight lines. The formation signal, on the other hand, appears at different times, since the cement thickness and formation acoustic properties change from one point to the next. In an interval with a very good bond, the pipe portion of the VDL does not show up because the amplitude of the wave train is too low to expose the film. The formation signal, however, comes in strongly. If a partially cemented section of casing produces an amplitude higher than the minimum amplitude measured in a well-cemented zone, a hydraulic seal may or may not exist. The bond index can help in this regard. The bond index is defined as the signal attenuation in the zone of interest divided by the attenuation in a zone with known good cementation. If the bond index is 0.8 or better over an interval of pipe, a reasonable assurance of hydraulic isolation is possible. The interval length of 0.8 bond index required for a variety of pipe sizes is anywhere from 5 to 15 feet, 1.5 to 4.6 meters. The larger the casing size, the longer the interval needed to ensure hydraulic isolation. The equation for the bond index is expressed in units of decibels per foot while most amplitude curves are presented in millivolts or percent free pipe. Most service companies have charts to convert from millivolts to decibels per foot and vice versa. A reduction in wellbore pressure from the time the cement hardens to the time of the CBL logging run can cause the pipe to shrink from the cement sheath, forming a microannulus around the casing. Even though this microannulus does not permit hydraulic communication, the cement cannot maintain the coupling to the pipe required to attenuate the acoustic signal. As a result, the recorded amplitude will indicate a poor bond. However, during logging, if the internal pipe pressure is increased above the curing pressure, the microannulus will be closed and an interpretable log will result. The travel time curve is the primary quality control curve on a CBL. Travel time is measured from the initiation of the acoustic signal at the transmitter to the arrival of the first signal at the near receiver which reaches a minimum amplitude level. When the signal is reduced due to a good bond, the travel time signal stretches since the minimum amplitude level is not reached until a later time. This is known as cycle stretch. If the pipe signal is very low, 
The first arrival may not reach the minimum amplitude level, but the second or later positive arrival may do so. This is known as cycle skipping. Neither of these effects should be of concern since they relate to a condition of good bonding. However, shortened travel time can also indicate that the tool is not properly centered and that the acoustic signal is traveling to the receiver faster through the shorter path on the side closer to the casing wall. Such a situation will result in an inaccurate log. Even if the tool is centered, very low porosity limestone or dolomite formations have faster travel times for an acoustic signal than steel pipe, perhaps by as much as 12 microseconds. In such cases, the formation signal beats the pipe signal to the receiver and a shorter travel time is recorded. Thus, the pipe-to-cement bond cannot be measured in fast formations.